everybody, and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, me, Ariel, and me, Raylene. It's what true, from coast to coast, from sort of Vancouver to sort of Halifax. <laughs> <laughs> the distant, not so big cities. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going over there, Ray? We were just saying it's raining. Um, it's actually not raining today, okay. but it's gloomy as heck. So mm-hmm. the here we go again with the weather, but it's it kind of goes into play with like what I did this weekend. So mm. on Saturday, it was, well, let me start actually, take it back farther. On Friday, it was like 30 degrees. Yeah, that and, scared me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I went to work and I was like, whoa, I have to like wear a dress and not wear a coat. Um, am I so going to be strange. okay? Like I was kind of yeah. scared. I was like, what if it gets cold? But of course it didn't. Uh, um, no. So that was a really beautiful day really enjoyed that and then saturday once again really really warm but i was at home so i was like what can i do with this sunny day and so we mainly just like did some running around but then i sat in the backyard and read a book (laughs) a whole book um i'm not a whole book but most of one i did i did finish a book i did finish a book and i read it mostly outside um but no like i have just been enjoying sitting outside and yesterday which was sunday was like a decently sunny day in the morning but then it got kind of mm. gloomy in the afternoon and I, I was sitting outside reading again because it was so nice out and then suddenly yeah. it kind of started to get cold and i could hear rain and i was like whoa what's oh, going yeah. on but then the rain went away but i actually read that book almost entirely outside so i have finished wow. two books so that'll be exciting to talk about <gasps> um but yeah i've just been enjoying the sunshine like normally yes. i don't care about the sunshine like i know a lot of people kind of get you know energy energized from you know sunny weather and i've never really felt that so much but all of a sudden it's starting to hit me and i'm like Mm. i want to be productive i like went outside and did more gardening i made homemade iced tea which i'm actually drinking right now here for the people yeah it's a blend of earl gray and pure ceylon tea and it's quite good (gasps) that sounds really good actually yeah yeah it's the best of both worlds kyle's favorite tea and my favorite tea (laughs) boom Damn. so yeah <laughs> i've just been like getting excited about doing kind of summery activities even though it's only may it's starting to feel like summer yeah, i guess yeah. spring just like what is spring it's anymore sprung. yeah <laughs> it went from <laughs> it's just like cold ice cold snow and now it's sprung <laughs> yeah yikes i know i i feel well i was gonna say i feel the same i guess i don't feel the same i feel very <laughs> differently i've i always am very excited about a sunny day mm. like um it's just it's like the it's it's just like the complete life attitude is different on a sunny day. Yeah. Suddenly to me everything feels possible. I feel <laughs> like life can be good, life will be fun. Um and you just feel so free when you're able to go around without a jacket or I thinking about it. am I going to yeah. get wet. Um <laughs> Whereas I do totally know what you mean about like a gloomy day has a really beautiful atmosphere. Like mm-hmm. it is a it is a good vibe, but for me it's not a good vibe unless I'm like so already supposed to have been having a very lazy day. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if it's like already a Sunday where my whole plan was just to lay around and it's gloomy outside, I'm like, okay, this is just atmosphere. Or yeah. if it's like October and I'm like, ah, yes, this is like Halloween vibes. Yeah. But any other time, like today, it is really rainy and gloomy and windy out. It just makes me sad. <laughs> like I woke up this morning. So uh, like you said, it's May 1st. And one thing I'm really excited about is like, we're, I'm doing a couple of challenges this month. So for mm, example, Raylene and I are, have decided to do a no spend month, mm-hmm. which we did last year. Do we also do it in May last year? Um, I don't think so. I know we did frugal February, but I feel like that was two that years was ago. Frugal. <laughs> wow and then really? we were trying to do like austere august or something like that or like <laughs> april we were trying to do it every other month and it just fell yeah. apart um i feel like that okay, was a little cool. too much but yeah no i like the idea of doing it in may i don't know no spend may kind of sounds yeah good. so we're doing no spend may and we are um and i'm like okay i'm excited about that i'm excited about a couple other things that are just gonna be like happening in may mm-hmm. and then i woke up and it was dark and gray and rainy and there's a few times i've had to run outside today and every time i'm like zipping up a whole jacket and putting on boots and i'm just like no i want it to be warm (laughs) this is why when i think about like people that live in california or new mexico or mexico or Mm -hmm. i'm just like that's such a different type of existence when it's always sunny yeah i think that would kill me inside yeah i mean i also hate being sweaty there's a balance it's a fine balance (laughs) My ideal day is a crisp, like, 14, 12 to 14 degrees, but with a sunny sky. A sunny sky. Yeah. I think that's a nice nice vibe. 
Yeah, I totally agree. Um, okay. Well, listen, today we're going to be doing our normal uh, reading updates, but we're also <laughs> going to be playing Two Truths and a Lie because we did that last week. Raylene, you did your Two Truths yeah. and a Lie. Um, and... I had a lot of fun. And so I decided it would be fun to do it backwards. Sick. And Raylene, I'm so excited about it. I want to start with it. No, okay. Whoa. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Why not? Okay. Here we are. I'm excited and terrified. All right. Let's go. So do we remember what I got? What my score was? I want to say you got four out of five. Like you nailed it. I, you only messed up first... one. And I mean, I did hand some of them to you because you, you sounded did. like you were going to be choosing an option and then you sort of changed it. So I, I went with what I knew was right. <laughs> the concept of two truths and a lie was somehow really twisting my mind into little knots. Um, but yeah, I mean, I actually have never together. really been on this end of two truths and a lie. So it might twist my brain up too for all okay, we know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so I have set up five sets of these okay. and we will see how you do. Um, yep. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. You ready? We're yeah. ready? Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Part one. <laughs> Fact one. I've only read three novels by George Orwell. Second fact, you're I, now I'm remembering why you had to have such a poker face because you don't want to reveal anything <laughs> in the. Don't look at me. You have um, to. <laughs> okay, I've only read three novels by George Orwell. I learned how to make sourdough bread because of a novel. And I believe the best uh, bookstore in New York City is The Strand. Uh, the last one is the lie because you believe the best bookstore in New York City is uh, McNally Jackson Seaport. She knows me too well. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> you saw through it easily. That first, that first George Orwell that one, though, could have been... Because I, I started immediately thinking. I'm like, Animal Farm, 1984. And... Um, What's that other one called? Let the Aspidistra Fly. But I was like, yeah, is there another one? Like, there might be a fourth. There might be a fourth. <laughs> it's true. So, I'm I've glad that you, those three. Whew, you threw me a bone there. <gasps> I've read a lot of his essays. That's so, what I was thinking like, about, too. I have read a lot more Orwell, yeah. but not novels. That's sneaky. Okay, you got that totally right. Awesome. Um, all right, number two. One of the rings that I wear every day is one that I bought in a bookshop. I've never read a novel by Haruki Murakami. And when I was a teenager, I had Percy Jackson posters up in my room. <laughs> Those all sound like things that could be true. Um, I know the Murakami one is true because okay. you've only read what I talk about when I talk about running and the one that you're reading now or maybe have finished by now. Those are okay. both nonfiction. You have not read an awful i'm like second guessing it but i'm pretty sure that that is that is true that is fact and i feel like the ring one is true so i'm gonna go with the percy jackson one is a lie you are correct <laughs> <laughs> i was like i don't know if you would have done that <laughs> i don't care about percy jackson at all <laughs> i know i was like that would be like a really a plot twist if that had been true <laughs> Right? I, I didn't like, even have Percy Jackson on my wall and I liked Percy Jackson. I was thinking about the posters I had in my room, which were, I had, there was a phase where I had a lot of Harry Potter posters in my mm -hmm. room. And then there was a phase where I had a lot of Twilight posters in my room. Yeah. Uh, but there was never a Percy Jackson phase. I don't know. I read the first book and I just felt like very mid about it. Like I yeah. didn't dislike it. I just felt like, okay, yeah, uh, sure. And then I watched <laughs> the movie with, um... Hmm. Logan Lerman. Logan Lerman. And again, I was just like, okay, sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just, but I know everyone's super excited because the new show is coming out soon. So that should be who knows? I could change my mind. But Maybe really you'll have, freaking then streak. you'll have a new poster on your wall. Yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, also, yes, you are t totally right that I've never read a novel by Hurricane Mercury. Okay, I've read that. most of the Wind Up Bird Chronicle, but I didn't finish it. Oh, that's true. Oh, you also and read the then... t-shirt book. I, I forgot yes, about that which one too. was the other nonfiction. That's fascinating. And then, um, yes, I wear a lot of rings and like I never take them off. Like I shower with these babies because who's <laughs> got the time to be putting rings on and off? And so <laughs> I just like leave them on. And one of the ones that I've had on for probably two or three years now, I got um, at Expressions of Time in Vernon right. when we lived there. That's so right. hell yeah. Okay, this one's the next next one is really fun. I think. Okay. Okay. So question number three, set number three. I have met Margaret Atwood twice. <gasps> I have met 
Cheryl Strayed twice. I have met John Green twice. <laughs> what on earth? Okay, I know the John Green one has to be true because he's all over the place. I've even I've been in an elevator with John Green one time. That was crazy. I've met John Green. Who hasn't <laughs> met John Green? <laughs> even I've probably met him. Um, twice for both of them. There's who? Okay. Okay, I'm, guys. We just had a big technical difficulty. Uh, I revealed my three things. I've met Cheryl Strayed twice. I've met Margaret Atwood twice, and I've met John Green twice. Raylene had a fun freak out because she yes. said, and I quote, this was the best two truths and a lie she'd ever heard. <laughs> you said that, right? I did. I did. <laughs> it's on the record uh, if CJ ever wants to play that. <laughs> yes. And um, actually, yes, yeah, CJ, cut that in right here. <laughs> that was probably the best two truths and a lie I've ever heard in my life. Um, <laughs> okay. And so basically, actually, you're right. We'll do a little dumb wizardry because it did record Raylene's side. It was my video that yes. cut it out. So we can insert Raylene's thought process and your guess right here. Because I know that you interviewed Margaret Atwood, obviously. But w when would you have met her another time? But then I don't remember you telling me about meeting Cheryl Strait twice. This is tricksy. I'm just going to have to guess because I can't logic my way out of this. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm going to say that meeting Margaret Atwood twice is the lie. And now we're back to the present and I can That's reveal reality. that you were sadly wrong. Oh, I know. Um, I was like, I just had no idea. There, it could have gone so many ways. <laughs> it could have. It could have. At least I knew that you'd met John Green more than once. I knew that. Yeah, like you said, who hasn't? Uh, no, that's just a little <laughs> joke. It's actually, he's so cool. And I feel like so grateful that I've gotten to, mm -hmm. to meet him. Um, but the Cheryl Strayed thing, I've only gotten to meet her once. And it was really, really cool. It was for this big interview that was about Margaret Atwood's new book. Mm. And, Sh and Cheryl Strayed was hosting the talk. And then they had three other YouTubers chatting, yeah. um, <laughs> which sounds weird and crazy. But, and I don't know, they decided on that panel somehow, right? But yeah, so Cheryl Strayed was not the talent of the evening. She was just there hosting it for Margaret Atwood, mm -hmm. which meant that I got to hang out with Cheryl Strayed in the green room while we waited for Margaret Atwood mm -hmm. to show up, um, which was so cool. And I just felt so excited. And what's also funny is at that time, really, I had not read Wild. But I oh, had read. I know. <laughs> it was before you even knew. It was before I even knew, um, but I did meet, uh, or sorry, I had read Tiny Beautiful Things. So yeah. I still felt like very excited and I got totally. her to sign it. And I also got her to sign Wild, which I bought at the airport on the way right. there. Yeah, see, I remember that part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So obviously that is the only time I met Cheryl, but um, that is obviously a time that I met Margaret Atwood. However, that was not the first time that I met Margaret Atwood. The first time I met her, I was at an event in New York City. I don't really i don't remember what the event was i think it might have been book riot live but i don't know but anyway it was at it was in new york it was at the strand mm. and it was just kind of a book party happening yeah you know like i think maybe there had been a talk first but now everyone was just mingling okay. in the rare books room and i saw margaret atwood <laughs> across the room i locked eyes and i remember talking to our friend jeremy and i was like oh, it's margaret atwood and he was like you gotta go say hi you're both canadian <laughs> i was like you're right <laughs> This I'm is going. the time. This is the place. <laughs> so I went and I, t I said hello to her and I talked to her for a few minutes and she was really nice. And I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank mm -hmm. you, goodbye, thank you, thank you. And then I left. So it's fantastic. Yes. Margaret Atwood. Eh, twice. All right. Okay. I'm ready for the next one. Okay. Number four. I have five house figurines on my bookshelves. <laughs> My most reshared photo of all time on Instagram is of one of my old bookshelves. And I've changed the way that I make coffee because of a book. Because of a book? I know you've changed the way you make coffee, but I don't remember the reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you just read them for me one more time? I got so yeah. lost. and I don't I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number one. I have five house figurines on my bookshelves. Okay. Two. My most reshared photo of all time on Instagram is of my old bookshelves. Yes. And three. I changed the way that I make coffee because of a book. <sighs> Sir, I feel like that's a trick. 
I feel like that last one is a trick. I'm like, is it because of a book? I'm going to go with my gut. I think the coffee one's a lie. You're right. Oh, that was so scary. <laughs> At first, I thought it was going to be like, I only have four houses on my bookshelf. So yeah. I was a little nervous about that. I didn't want to do that because I feel like those are really hard. Yeah. So you're like, uh, how do you pick a specific number? But yeah. I do. Have, I counted them myself. Uh, 36. But last year, last year, uh, 37. Anyway, I, I have five house figurines on my bookshelf. I counted them. I've got the two little tin ones. I've oh, yeah. got the paper one, the Lego one, and the ceramic one Amazing. that I recently got. So and for anyone wondering, I there. legit cannot see her bookshelves. There's no yeah, way I could have ever... I can't even see no. a single house. <laughs> <laughs> see and books. then um, it is a true fact that for some reason... This is really weird. Like, this is just a weird thing that I took a photo before... I think... I don't know. It was in BC. It was mm. my corner bookshelves. Oh, I yeah. took some photos of those shelves and posted them on my Instagram. What then has happened in the years <laughs> afterwards yeah. is that I don't know how, but that photo gets screenshotted or downloaded yeah. or whatever and reposted onto interior design <laughs> Instagrams all of That's the time. So weird. Like literally all the time. It's really slowed down now because it's been like literally four years since that happened. Yeah. But there was like a solid year or two where every day or every week I was getting tagged in somebody reposting my photo. Oh, and so it's funny. often like it's really funny because it's, it's often like six photos in a gallery and I'm like the third or fourth yeah. one. And it's like, which shelf would you rather have? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, that's really awkward. That's funny because I didn't know about that at all. But I just like I know, that just that's... made sense to me. I was like, yeah, that sounds true. But that's so weird. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny to me that it's the, the one that I had in the old house. Like, I'm just yeah, like, these are old in my head, this is the best one I have. Yeah. But they've gotten stuck. Uh, to be fair, I haven't shared many photos of these because they're not done in my mind. Mm. Um, okay. And then the final one was, I changed the way I make coffee because of a book. This was a trick question. So I'm glad that you got it right. Yeah. It's, I changed the way I make tea because of a book. Oh, because George Orwell. I, I read, yes, the George Orwell. George Orwell wrote an essay on um, how to make tea and like how you should enjoy tea. And I took it to heart. Yeah, <laughs> I just changed the way I make tea, um, but I have not changed the way I make coffee because of a book. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad I but got what that. you were referring to, because Raylene said that I have changed the way I yeah. make coffee. I have. I did get a <laughs> fancier coffee thing. Uh, I got a Chemex, but that's just because I thought it'd be fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's just because you wanted because I coffee. got into coffee. <laughs> um, okay, so you're you're so far three of four. This okay. is the final one. Whew. I think you're gonna get this one. Okay. I have read Animal Farm more than seven times. Why? When I graduated, <laughs> I stole a book from my high school. <laughs> I have only finished reading one dystopian YA series in my life. <laughs> and it's The Hunger Games. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm going to go with Animal Farm is the lie because you've only read it six times, right? Or have you secretly read it without telling me? <laughs> okay, well, what was the second one again? That you stole a book from your high school? I know you've definitely taken a book from your school library, but I don't know if that was in high school. Hmm, I'm just going to go with my gut instinct that the Animal Farm one is a lie. Okay, you know what? I feel like giving it to you because I feel like I've read it seven or eight times okay but you always I've say six count. every time you have talk I, about it you say you've read six? it six times so that's what i'm referencing you see what i mean so <laughs> i've lost all count i've lost all credibility on this one so i'm gonna give it to you but it's um, the high school one isn't it it was the high school yeah. one because okay. i stole a book from my grade school yes I, see, I knew that school i knew that i didn't sure. return it um so you did i feel like you did know that and you pointed that out correctly and it was my i even when i was typing i was like i don't remember <laughs> what i've said i don't know how many times i've read it anymore i've yeah. lost track yeah 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 so okay. you get it and that means that we've tied Woo! four out of five that's pretty fun that's pretty good we know each other pretty well oh that's nice isn't it <laughs> it's, it's a friendship <laughs> test <laughs> It's like a little friendship quiz. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I hope that people were playing along at home and that they had fun guessing what I'm lying about. Mm -hmm. um, I have only one piece of book news today. So let's actually just do that now. Yeah, and heck? let's slam in some book news right here, right now. 
That was me imagining the book news song going That's on awesome. there. Oh. Yeah, you're vibing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I only have one headline. I literally did so much research today to try and find mm. something else, and nothing else was interesting to me. So Dang. this is the only one we're getting. Okay. <clears throat> Sparkle in the sun? More like, we're about to have fun! <laughs> Twilight show incoming. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> the headlines are back. Yeah. I forgot to do them the last few weeks, but they're too fun to stop. So... Yep, everyone's already heard of this, and I don't have much to say because there has been very little revealed. But mm. basically, breaking news, a Twilight show has been announced, and it is fully happening, Yikes. and Stephanie Mayer is fully attached to it. Um, different things I was reading had different uh, claims on her involvement. Like, some people said she's going to be doing the screenplay. Okay. Uh, screenplay? Script? Um, <laughs> but some people said that she's just, like, attached. Like, we don't know yeah. yet. You know what I mean? Okay. So, I'm not sure yet on that front. But it's very, very interesting. Hmm. Because, obviously, the Harry Potter show just got yeah, announced a couple weeks happening. ago. We've got the Percy show happening. We oh the other piece of news that I'm like is it new or whatever is the ballad for songbirds yeah. for S and snakes trailer was released. I know some people are really hyped on that. I watched it and I'm like, it just seems so overproduced to me. I'm like this seems like a lot. they splashed a lot of cash and they really want us to know, totally. which is ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Are we in the capital? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, but yeah, like here's this article from USA Today that says, first Harry Potter, now there's a Twilight TV series wow. underway with Stephanie Mayer involved. And I love this. Good job, Brian Alexander, who wrote this. He writes, a new TV dawn is coming to Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. That's like, a, yeah, that's like your headline. <laughs> Exactly. I really respect it. Um, novels are the, or, sorry, it says they're in early development with Lionsgate TV. So it is going to be mm. a show, which is exciting. It's happening. Okay. And it says that no details are available other than knowing that Stephanie Mayer is involved. Okay. So this is going to be something that we track because it's so funny. I feel so weird about like a harry potter show happening yeah and i think it's because like i was so invested over a decade of childhood reading these books mm -hmm. and watching the films blah 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 and so it feels crazy to me that like oh not even like 10 years later they're already ready rebooting the whole thing yeah whereas with twilight i'm like it definitely didn't have that deep of an emotional response because it's not linked to your childhood yeah memories, it was teenagehood right? Which is a it was different. teenagehood and we all know that they're not very good mm -hmm. like they're good in that we love them because we watched them but they're not good in the like cinematic sense no <laughs> definitely so not. i'm like yeah i could see how that's improved i also am very curious if this could be the like dawn of a new vampire era because Maybe. vampires are so cool and i would <laughs> yeah. love more vampire content all right. How do you feel? Uh, how do you feel about the upcoming show? Um, I mean, just like you were saying, like it feels kind of like it's too. Well, I think it's too soon to be doing something mm. like this because kind of crazy. The, the problem with for Twilight and Harry Potter is that like like you're saying, like this is literally like ten years ago that these things kind of finished or whatever. We all remember them clearly. Exactly. <laughs> if if we're you know, are people really so? I don't know, like, unable to watch old movies. Like, it's not even old. Like, I'm not saying that these movies are old, but, like, no, is it that yeah. kids today are like, oh, that, like, looks too bad. I don't want to watch that. So they're, like, remaking it. Like, I don't know what the what the thought process is. Like, why they feel the yeah. need to do it quite yet. Because, like you said, the story is still so fresh. And, yeah. like, growing up, I always wished that Harry Potter would be made into a TV show because obviously there's just not enough time in a movie to like get all the details that everyone wants. And that's what the the show is going to do, which is great. But I still feel like it's too soon. I feel like they should have waited. I, I always agree. said 50 years from now when they remake Harry Potter, that'll be so cool. Um, but it's too soon for that. And I feel the same way I about also, Twilight. I feel also like... I don't know. I, it's the same thing over and over again of like Hollywood just like refuses to make original content. Yeah, yeah, that also and bothers me. 
so boring yeah it's like really boring i'm like i'd rather not another harry potter show mm -hmm. like i'd do something new like i've seen harry potter do yeah. something new i can watch and it as twilight, many times as i want i don't have to yeah, watch a new version exactly of it. with twilight i'm like we've seen twilight we've read twilight i'm like i would be so much more excited if stephanie mayer was paying uh was penning a new vampire story mm -hmm. or a new twilight story that was like uh just at least a different story Story. yeah because like i want like, a whole show about this. rosalie <laughs> or alice yeah <laughs> like i've been or just like wanting that totally new characters yeah in a that new too. city or yeah. something like it's just like ah my god just rehashing the same thing over and over and yeah, over and over again it's really kind of boring honestly um so well we're gonna follow it because we both really love twilight yeah like i'll definitely be watching it because i'm curious yeah if yeah. it's if it's like i can imagine it potentially being better than the movies or i could see it yep. bombing and being way worse like i yeah. just because we it has almost like a cult following at this point like people who yeah. love twilight like we love the awkwardness of it we love Kristen yes. and rob like we love <laughs> what they are and so yeah. i can't like it'll it'll take a lot for the show like there has to be that the perfect casting you know like the casting has to be perfect otherwise i won't be invested but we'll it's see maybe be... it can change my mind who knows it'll be fun to see the casting of like who they announce is gonna be yeah. everyone um and like will this be four seasons because there's four books or like i'm curious about yeah. how long is it gonna be a mini series is this a queen's gambit situation <gasps> that would be so funny it's like six episodes <laughs> the twilight <laughs> saga awesome <laughs> um but yeah like redoing stuff is not new it's always been done like case in point pride and prejudice mm. has like seven or eight t movie adaptations yeah. right and we everyone has their favorite it's like i'm i love the 2005 one i love the 95 one um but even those i don't know like it's a tv show versus i guess it's like a tv show versus movie mm -hmm. um but the source material came out uh, a really long time ago with pride and prejudice yeah. which is like whereas here it's like the book came out in 2005 right the first twilight i think book. so yeah and then the first movie version came out in 2008 mm -hmm. or 9 and then here we are 2023 it's just so soon for all of it to happen it feels yeah. so crammed together um but anyways we're talking in circles. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but now that we've gone backwards, we'll just keep the good times rolling. So we'll go to what you usually do at the start, which is talk about our reading. Perfect. Raylene, what have you read or are reading? So the first book that I read this past week, which was the first one I was telling you about, I was reading outside. I right. started reading it in the backyard and it was so nice. I just wanted something like short and quick to read. So I decided to mm. read People from My Neighborhood. <gasps> by Hiromi Kawakami. So I guess the elephant in the room was that I was reading Red Rising last week. I have given yeah. up on Red Rising. I'm not oh. into it right now. That is not, like I literally read 20 pages and I was just like, no, thank you. So <laughs> I'm sure the book is fine. It's just so not what I was in the mood for. Like what I was in the mood for was this pink book. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. so yes, People from My Neighborhood was written by Hiromi Kawakami and translated by Ten Goosen. It was released in English in 2020 and it is a collection of short stories that are all interconnected. So I read this book, obviously, mm. and I read it fairly quickly because each story is like three pages long. Um, right. So yes. they're, they're like, like micro, microfiction. Microfiction, micro fiction, exactly. Yeah. And what I learned as I was reading the book, though, which I didn't realize before, is that their stories are all actually connected because it is literally just about this one neighborhood. So the narrator is always the same person and um she'll kind of just be like oh yeah so then that person you know who runs the chicken farm or whatever will do this and then he'll <laughs> pop up later like 20 stories later and you'll like see him again and there's all yeah. these like characters because she'll talk she'll talk about like the kids at her school or whatever and um so that was kind of interesting i didn't realize that they were going to be like that i don't know why i didn't make that connection but um yeah but the stories themselves were it's kind of strange um throughout the yeah. first half of the book they're mostly normal like nothing too strange was happening but as you get further into the book i feel like the stories started to get stranger and stranger like there's this one story that was i think it was called pigeonitis and it's about these people <laughs> who start getting this like disease that they call pigeonitis where people just start like turning into pigeons <laughs> kind of yeah. it's like whoa what what am i reading right now um but <laughs> like it all just like comes back down to earth in the end like so weird things will happen but they kind of come in waves and then it's, yeah, it's yeah. so it was a strange little book i wouldn't say i loved it but i didn't like 
dislike it. It had enough good yeah. stories that, it, like, some of them were quite funny. Like, I found myself laughing. Um, and I really liked the kind of more surreal stories. I almost wish that there had been more of them right off the bat. Because right. that's what I like in short stories. They can kind of do all sorts of strange things. And it's just, like, accepted because it's a, a short story. A lot of them are very kind of magical realism. Um, but you've read a little bit of this book, haven't you? Yeah, I read the first few stories. Mm. Uh, not that many of them, but I was really enjoying it. What was funny, what, what happened was that I read a story. Like, it literally might have been the first story. Yeah. I think it was. It was the one about a little boy. Yeah, um, like a little boy yeah. who's at a uh, at the base of a tree and this person yes, like finds him under boy. a sheet or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I read that story and I loved it. And so I was like, Connor, you have to read this story. And so I yeah. gave it to him. And then he just ended up reading the whole book. And <laughs> so I was like, that's nice. Like, he'll read that. And then I just started reading something else. Mm -hmm. And then I wasn't reading it anymore. I so see. I just kind of slipped off of it. But it was what I read I was liking. Yeah, like, it definitely is an interesting book. And um, I partially read it because I wanted something quick to read. But also, Hiromi Kawakami was one of my... Uh, authors that mm, i needed to read yes. this year so i was kind of like you know what? oh wait it's perfect. right i know i kind of so checks it off i didn't even think I about even it think. until i had started reading it i was like wait <laughs> this is like a oh goal of mine to read more of her books because in my yes. head i wanted to read one of her other books like that was what i was yeah, thinking the, of reading first um yeah. but then for some reason i just decided to pick this one up and um yeah i'm glad that i finally read it like i'm definitely glad that i read it that's so sick I, yeah yeah i would recommend it like tentatively i wouldn't like it's not like everyone must read it but i definitely enjoyed it um but then i read another book just over the oh past God. couple of days over the weekend and that book is the guest cat by takashi oh, Hariyade. really yes the guest cat was first published in 2001 with the english translation to be published by new directions publishing in 2014. Hariyade is best known as a poet though he has also written several books of essays and of course this novel he currently lives in tokyo with his wife who is a fellow poet and their cat i read this book over the past couple of days and i actually filmed a reading vlog that will be going up on our patreon soon um and i didn't really like it <laughs> Oops. Unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, let me tell you why. And actually, I um, was looking up this book on New Directions Publishing's website. And I can just like, this one sentence might tell you why I didn't really like this book. So let me hmm. just read this for you. The Guest Cat is a subtly moving and exceptionally beautiful novel about the transient nature of life and idiosyncratic but deeply felt ways of living. Nope. Does that sound like something Raylene would like? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> so this book isn't really about a cat like there is a cat okay. in the book okay. but it's not like a plot based book that's about this cat necessarily right. it's about okay. this couple that lives in a little cottage uh, kind of like on the property of a bigger house that they rent from this lady who owns the houses and this cat kind of just like comes into their lives because the neighbor kid like gets this cat and then she walks around and kind of like will come you know sit with them and hang out with them and then leave and so it's I mean I think this is like a reason that a lot of people who like books different from me would like this book is that it is just mm. very kind of like wistful and like yeah you know it's kind yeah. of like a feeling rather than a like a plot based plot. book you know right. it's it's more like a vibes kind of book so like there are very beautiful descriptions of like the architecture in the house and the nature mm. and the trees and so i can definitely understand why people would like this book it was just not for me um it's and like the writer is a poet he's quite literally a poet by trade so if if you want poetic writing he'll give it to you but that's just not what i want i what, what i think like cat book to me the pinnacle is the traveling cat chronicles because that is just like a book about a cat. It's narrated by a cat. So you get to see like the quirkiness of this cat character yeah. and like going on an adventure and stuff. Like to me, that is what I want in a cat book. And um, this one, I feel like I was hoodwinked a little bit. It's, yeah. it's just not enough about a cat, <laughs> which is what I really wanted. So sadly, did not enjoy it, but like, uh, like but I you said, read it. I read it. Cat book down. And it's kind of a mashed potato book, which was also partly oh. why I wanted to read it. It is now may as as we've said so mashed potato may yeah. is in full effect and that wasn't one that i was planning to read for mashed potato may but it kind of just happened and um yeah i felt like it would be perfect for a reading vlog so that's why i did it and i was able to read it really quickly which was good so i feel like may is off to a good start in terms of nice. um, tackling those books which um i actually haven't started my mashed potato may books yet have you 
No, which is a really fun transition. Yeah. Let's talk about Mashed Potato May for a hot sure. second here. So Mashed Potato May, if for some reason this is the first episode you've listened to, I don't know why you start <laughs> on this weird one. Um, but it's basically um, Mashed Potato is a book. A Mashed Potato book <laughs> is a concept we thought up, which basically just is a book, even though you're excited to read it, much like you're excited to eat Mashed Potato books, mm. you keep putting it off. You keep putting it off, waiting for the perfect moment, maybe to the end of your meal. But by the time you get to it, it's sort of like you eat it and it was delicious. And you're like, why did I wait so long? Yep. I should have just enjoyed this when it was ripe in my mind and the excitement was hot. Mm -hmm. um, instead of now it's like creating pressure and a little bit of stress yeah. on you as well. So we decided to do, um, we did this last year, right? Yes, Ray? yes. Yeah, so we decided to basically dedicate one month, May, to reading those mashed potato books and finally tackling the books mm -hmm. that have been sitting on your shelves for the longest or the books that you've been meaning to read and you keep saying, I'm meaning to read this, <laughs> yeah. mashed potatoes, and we just thought it'd be fun, mashed potato May. So mm -hmm. first of all, let me just say we are using a hashtag, hashtag mashed potato May. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and Raylene, if you have your phone or your computer in front of you, maybe, maybe. you could do the same thing I'm doing. Look at, I thought this would be fun, but I forgot to tell you about oh, it before we recorded. I, um, I thought it'd be fun just for us to look at the hashtag and point out a couple of oh, the things we're yeah. seeing people reading. Yeah, right? I want to see if there's any trends, if there are books that keep popping up. Yeah, I know. I felt the same way. I was like, are we going to see like the same, like everyone's been reading, meaning to read Jane Eyre? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also realized that some people um, are from last year, so we have to kind of watch out on the on the the old date there. Yes, but there are a couple of posts up. Um, one book that I'm seeing is Howl's Moving Castle. Oh, this very is, good. was shared by Books for Nats. Right, mm -hmm. you've read that one, right? I have. Yes, I famously like the movie a lot more than the book. But um, I think it's still probably a great book to read. And it's a middle grade, so it'll be a quick read. That's also something mm. good. Well, I'm looking at a post here by uh, Reading by the Shelf, who has some big ambitions for this month. They have chosen <laughs> The Secret History by Donna Tartt, A Little Ooh. Life by Hanya Yanagihara, Breasts and Eggs by Mieko Kawakami, and End of Green Gables. That is a pretty Ooh. sick lineup, if I do say so myself. That's a really good, si that's a sick lineup. And also the, I mean, the End of Green Gables thing feels very Books Unbound. Yes, yes. And I mean, I love The Secret History and A Little Life. And both of us have been meaning to read Breasts and Eggs for years. So that is like very much a uh, it's true <laughs> Books Unbound stack right there. Um, Hendrix's Books Corner shared their um, post and it says... That this month of May, besides reading only API, which stands for Asian and Pacific Islanders mm. um, month books, as I always do, I'll also be participating in Mashed Potato May. And so the books that they've picked are both. And so a lot of these are uh, us books, really. An IQ84, mm. Sweet Bean Paste, Lonely Castle in the Mirror. We got Ooh. some classics on here. <laughs> Very pink. Very good which I respect. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, I think it'd be fun if every week for the, like every episode in May, yeah. we'll do a little check-in on live on the pod. I love that. See what you guys are reading. So definitely post with your hashtag mashed potato may so that we can look at what you guys are reading, what you've read. Um, we'll check in again at, on our next episode. But yeah, Ray, I haven't started reading them yet because mm. like you said, today as of recording, it's May 1st. Yes. So I was just saving them till actual may yeah i considered yeah. starting one last night because i finished yeah. the guest cat around like five or six o'clock so i was like oh i could start a book and just like get yeah. the jump on it but then i ended up playing video games all night long so <laughs> it ended up not being a problem at all so yeah i haven't Oops. decided for sure which one i'm going to start with so i'm not going to say anything but i am reading a book that i've been reading for the past okay. week or so so i figured cool. i would talk about that um i am actually reading american gods by neil no Gaiman. way yeah hey there you go that's cool. So I am listening to the audiobook. I signed up for a free oh, trial for this nice. audiobook website so that I could <laughs> listen to the full <laughs> cast version because oh, unfortunately so Libby only had just like a different version that was just narrated oh. by one guy. And I was like, yeah. I am not going to do that. I'm not going to do that to myself. <laughs> if there's one thing that people have been telling me for years is that I have to yeah. listen to the audiobook version of this book. And so far, I can completely understand why. And mm. I actually feel like if I was just reading the print copy, I don't think I'd be enjoying it as much as I am with listening to it because it yeah it's quite literally full cast like even side characters that pop in for like two minutes get their own voice actor like everybody Whoa. is voiced by someone 
different and they're like all have the perfect accents that you need and stuff like it's just so immersive to be able right. to listen to it and it's quite a long book it's just under 20 hours i'm about three and a half hours in and really enjoying it um so like for basic plot for those who don't know american gods is about this guy named shadow moon who at the beginning of the book is in jail and you don't really know why he's in jail um but then he gets let out fairly shortly after this uh, the book begins and there's a tragedy that happens to him and then this random guy is like hey you want to work for me and he's like i don't know this is kind of weird and it starts to you know get kind of there's some fantasy elements it's kind of spooky and kind of weird and like it's yeah. it's it's good like i'm really liking it so far and they're kind of doing like a road trip also which i always enjoy so i'm liking it so far but yeah, i'm still like just barely scratched the surface of this book but i'm liking it and i'm glad to because i i was looking at my um books that i've acquired this year so far my spreadsheet mm. that i have and i was like i really need to be reading these books that i'm buying if i'm gonna stick yeah. to my goal so i'm gonna try and make that a personal goal just to like read you know a couple of them each month and i'm gonna hmm. probably slow down on buying them because i've bought so many i actually have yeah. some more here <laughs> next to me that arrived from the book depository uh -oh. Uh oh what am i gonna do um so so yeah so yeah, that's where I'm at. But are you reading anything at all? Okay, hold on, hold on, pause. You do? You, are you saying you have some books to haul? Oh yes, or... I, I, yes, 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 yes. Uh, okay. Let's I mean, let's shift to that because I'm so curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm kind of scared because um. Uh oh. I'm I'm just hoping that none of these will be ones that you're hoping to buy for me. Wink, wink. Okay. Um, Okay, so I, like I said before, I got seven books from the book depository. I've already hauled Astral Season, Beastly Season. I have five right. more here. One of them still has not so shown up. one's missing. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, one is missing. Hopefully I'll have it next week. But I figured I just need to get the, the rest of this haul kind of out of the way. So the first book I got is called <laughs> The Book of Tokyo, A City in Ooh. Short Fiction. So I don't know That's if you've seen so these. Pretty. There's a whole I've series of these for different I've cities. I've seen that before. I don't really know what it's about, but I've seen that cover for sure. Yeah. So I was, of course, on Book Depository looking for like Japanese translated fiction, things that I don't normally see in bookstores here. And so I was looking up, um, which author was I looking up when I found this? Hiromi Kawakami has a story in here. So oh, okay. this came up when I was looking at her. And it's just like a, an anthology of a bunch of different authors have written short stories, but they are all set in Tokyo. Banana, mm. Banana Yoshimoto also has a book in here. I just saw that. Oh, cool. Or a story. So I don't really know what any of the stories specifically are about, but I was just like intrigued enough by by that because like there's a couple of authors that I know, but also I'm hoping to maybe discover some new authors that I've never read and then maybe they have novels that we can read, you know? So I decided to just totally. go for that. Also, it's very cute and pink, so... I kind of just had to get that. And then next up, I got a book called Boy Parts by Eliza <gasps> Clark. I've been seeing this <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. This book, I've been very curious about it for a while. And um, all I really know, a lot of people have compared it to American Psycho. But it's like Ooh, okay. hot girl American Psycho kind of vibes. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I've heard that. That I've sounds that. right up my alley. <laughs> So I don't really know too much about it plot wise. I just know that a couple of people I know online have also really enjoyed it. So I took a chance on that. And that's a book. It's a UK book, like the authors from the UK. So I don't think mm, I've ever okay. really seen that in stores here. So yeah, I took a chance on that. And take a chance on me. Exactly. Take a chance on mm -hmm. me. Okay, sorry, go on. <laughs> okay. Then next, I got a book called A Crooked Tree by Una Mannion. Oh my god. Isn't it that cool? could be that could be cover of the year. I'm not even kidding. I'm it's obsessed with It's very that. very beautiful. That's So, beautiful. this one is set in the 80s and the plot that I know about this is that it's like a family that are just like driving and I think the kids are like arguing in the back or something and the mom says to one of them like get out and walk home you can walk home and then she goes missing so that's kind of stressful it's like 1980s you know different times things were different back then but it just looks really cool and i, I bought this one like completely on the recommendation of someone else that i know online i was just like mm. you love this book i will give this book a, a try cool i will do cool. that okay next up this is such a random book but um it's called Slow Days, Fast Company, The World, The Flesh, and L.A. Yeah. by Eve Babbitts. So, I have that one, don't I? Do you? 
Yeah, didn't I haul that one recently? I feel well, like not recently, you may... like last year. Okay, if you do, that was awesome. That'd be awesome, and we should read it together. Um, I think I see it. Well, I feel like you I may have already... hauled a different book by her, but I can't remember. Yeah, I feel like you're Black right. Black Swans, maybe. Anyways, I feel something. like I have that one. For some reason, I feel like I have. That We're gonna have to figure this out. But yeah, I've just been very curious about Eve Babbitts for a while, and yeah, I really am into like the '70s and like the culture yeah. of Hollywood in that time and stuff like that. So that's what her books are primarily about. They're like mm -hmm. kind of essays, but I think this one might be kind of like fictionalized, like short stories kind of. I, I can't keep track. Her books are all kind of blending together in my mind, but I've really been wanting to give her a try for a while. So I decided to pick that bad boy that's up. That's cool, yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited about that one. And then the last one that I've got here today is one that I'm also very, very excited for, The <gasps> Pachinko Parlor by yes. Elisa Shuradusipin. So yes. she wrote Winter in Sokcho, as yeah. we know, and I really liked that book. And ever since I read it, I've been dying to get my hands on this book. And this was my only opportunity to get it so far because <laughs> this is not in bookstores here, unfortunately. So I'm really excited. Also, I feel like these two books kind of have like similar color schemes. Well, they really like do. if you look at them yeah it's kind of kind of spooky actually it's got the red little, and the blue yeah. that's the, a crooked tree and the pachinko parlor have the kind of matching covers so that is my little haul I'm <laughs> very very excited about it that you got so many books really i that's gonna, like really no. add to your list you've well, been doing very good <laughs> i know i've been doing very good and i'm going to continue doing to be a very good person in terms of not buying too many books because the book depository is closed now. I only did that yes. because of that. And I went to the book sale recently, obviously. Sale. Um, but that's not gonna happen again. So <laughs> the famous last words, right? <laughs> I've decided that after Mashed Potato May, my so goal funny. is to like read some of these books that I just bought though. Yeah, like Mashed yeah, Potato May cool. is all about reading books that you've been meaning to read for a long time, whereas these yes. are all fresh. New. So yeah. I'm kind of not allowed to read them for May. But That's so the summertime, I'm hoping to just kind of blast through all these books that I've been buying. <laughs> I love that. Thanks. I think that's really funny, but um, genuinely think all of those sound sick. Right? Like I get why you bought them all. They sound awesome. Yeah, I just, they all called to me. I spent so much time Holder. just like, pouring over the book depository trying to pick the perfect <laughs> books and i feel like i feel like they're that <laughs> that's awesome yeah um okay well i have two things in common with you okay the first um is that i bought a book i have a mm. haul uh it's only one but um i'm very excited about this so this book is called um mod martha by gwendolyn brooks Ooh, have you heard of this one no, ever no i love it though I hadn't either, and it sounds so good. So okay. basically, um, yeah, so basically I follow a person on Instagram who used to be the best book YouTuber of all time. Mm. <laughs> Ron Lit was the YouTube channel back in the day. Mm. Um, but they just have the best recommendations like i feel like they never fail like they're okay. always right that books are good like yeah. i feel like they she just has really really good taste um but anyways so she posted this book on her instagram stories very like a week ago two weeks ago yeah. and she was like this is one of the best books i've read in years this Whoa. is now going to be one of my go-to gifts for people <gasps> because i think that so many people need to read this book um and i was like okay you've convinced me and i forget what else she posted on her story but she just had like other things to say that were like really that sounded really yeah. really good so the author gwendolyn brooks i don't know anything about but it, at the back it says was an american poet educator and civil rights activist um was born in topica and i don't i don't know where that is in 1917 hmm. and raised in chicago um i've have I ever been to Chicago? No, I keep go. I keep wanting to go to Chicago. I've been to the Chicago airport, and it's oh. such a cool airport. That's besides the point. <laughs> um, so basically, this is told in four vignettes, Ooh. and it is a coming of age story mm -hmm. of the main character Maud Martha, who is on on the cover here. It says Maud Martha Brown is a little girl growing up on the south side of 1940s Chicago. And so the four stories track her growing up. And oh, like, cool. I don't know at one which story, but she like gets married. Like it, it goes yeah. that far. So I just sounded really, really good. It's, but it's also really, really short.
short, which was appealing to me. Of course. Of course. <laughs> it was 114 pages. So I was like, you know what? I'm in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that awesome. And then, uh, oh, and the other thing I'll say is I picked this up because I went to a poetry night. We <gasps> totally gapped this, Ray, but like <laughs> April was, I guess, National Poetry Month. Whoa. Oops. And um, there was a poetry event happening at Lunenburg Bound, which mm. you know is my favorite bookshop. That's only like an hour outside of Halifax. Yeah. So I was like, we're going. <laughs> so we went and um, I had ordered this book like a week previous oh. and it was there for pickup. No so way. I had a really fun time at their poetry event, but mm. I also picked up my book that I had ordered <laughs> because I was like, this is going to, this is going to work out time wise. No, that's beautiful. Um, yeah. So that was cool. Okay. So that's the only book that I have picked up. The other book that I'm currently reading, as I mentioned, is Novelist as a Vocation mm. by Mr. Hukumur Kami. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Still pushing through it, Raylene. It's super weird because every time I sit down to read it, I have such a happy, good time. Like, yeah. I'm really, really enjoying it. But I don't make that much progress. Mm. I, like, I'm, like, slow. I'm sco- I don't know why it's so slow. <laughs> I'm, like, what the hell's going on? Does it feel like slow. it has the same kind of, like, memoir ishness that his other writing book has or is that what's different about it maybe because i know that that made it very readable because you're like learning about him while also learning about writing so what's this one like in comparison well i would say that it is um different because it's essays and so one of the essays was very like very much like that i'm trying to find in the thing what it was called oh yeah like essay number two is called when i became a novelist Mm. and you're just like okay yeah this is really like very memoir yeah and then the the one after that was on literary prizes and he's talking a lot about like why he doesn't respect literary prizes why he oh, thinks okay. that they're garbage and his experiences in japan and with with japanese literary yeah. prizes and what he thinks of them and stuff and so it was a little bit about him but it was mainly about his thoughts on literary right. prizes the one that i just finished was called on originality and it was like the, what he thinks that it means to be original and stuff. Yeah. And I kind of found it a little boring. And yeah. he didn't, it wasn't a lot about him. It was, you know what I mean? Like it was just my thoughts on what it means to be an original yeah. artist. And I was just like, ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's my only worry with that. Because I like um, his other book and, for example, On Writing by Stephen King are both very like personal, like memoirs yes. mixed with writing. And that's what makes them so fun to read. So we'll- yeah. I'm interested to see how this one ends up. I know, same. So we will see. Here, here's what I have coming up, really. What should I write about? That's hmm. like he's. I've just started that one. He's yeah. like, this is the question I get asked the most. People are always like, oh, what should yeah. I write about? Making time your ally. I'm writing a novel. A completely personal and physical occupation. Regarding schools. What kind of characters should I include? Who do I write for? And going abroad, a new frontier. (laughs) One thing that I'm really learning is that a huge part of his life and job is translating books into Japanese. Which I did not know that he was a translator, but he's like, that's a huge part of what he does. I know. It's time to write. It's crazy. I don't understand this guy's (laughs) prolific. Um, Okay, so I'm reading that. Oh, and then the other thing. So this was the other thing I have in common with you Mm. this week. It's just that I have been continuing on with my audiobook, True, True Grit. Grit. Mm-hmm. It's so good. <laughs> I'm so glad you're loving it. Yesterday, drove home from Halifax, and I was like, this is great. I'm going to have some time to listen to my audiobook. But oh, it was so sad, really. It's like, this is a comedy of errors. Oh. Um, I go to listen to my audiobook, and it says, your audiobook was, has been returned. <gasps> And Uh-oh. I was like, no. <laughs> and so I like go to try and borrow it again, but it's got like three or four people oh, no. are ahead of me in line. Yeah. And I was like, I was so excited to keep listening to it. I was really, really enjoying it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy it. I'm just going to buy it. Yeah. Like, I think it was $20 or something like that. And I was like, that's worth it to me. I'm supporting. I bought it through Libro FM. So I was like, I'm supporting my local bookshop and a cool company. I was like, I'm just going to buy it because it's worth it. It's really, really good. Yeah. So I bought it. And then that that was yesterday bought it and i listened to another what uh, some time of it and it's just so good and i was on the drive like like gasping and stuff like i it like something would happen i was like no (laughs) like i was fully enraptured it's just so good the story is really good the characters are really good but also the narration is so good like she donna tart is doing such a fun 
time of reading. Yeah, oh, that's great. Um, it's just fantastic. So then I get home that last night, and then I'm in bed doing whatever, and then I get a notice mm. from Libby that says that it's coming. It's ready. <laughs> it's ready. So clearly, those four people in front in feeling, front of me yeah. just all skipped it, and it came to me, and I was like, "Right, I've definitely done that before. Sometimes it's if fine. you're just patient." For like a day, it'll come through. But you wanted to listen to it then. I wanted to listen to it. I don't know. It was so much fun. And now you can listen to it as slowly as you want to. That's true, actually. There's no pressure anymore. The pressure is gone. (laughs) Um, But I haven't finished anything. I felt like this week was so weirdly busy with life. Mm. Yeah. Um, So I just haven't finished anything, which is a little unsatisfying. But I'm really hoping to finish these up really soon so that I can move on to my mashed potato May thing. Yeah. Or else these are going to become mashed Uh-oh. potatoes. And then what will we do? <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> I know. It's scary. It's scary to think about. Um, Speechless. I-, I will do a plug. This mm. is a plug, and why not? Um, we have a discount code for Libro FM that is yes. an affiliate. I, it's an affiliate, I think. So basically, if you use our code, you get two books for the price of one. Mm-hmm. So it's their monthly membership is fifteen dollars a month, or I think it's fourteen ninety nine. It's fifteen dollars a month, and then if you use our code, which is linked in the description, like our little affiliate yeah. link, you'll get two books. For that price. Yep. And I just went and looked on Libro FM and they have the American Gods full cast edition. Ooh, um, good plug. Yeah. I highly yeah, recommend right. it so far and I'm only three yeah. and a half hours in. <laughs> and and they do have True Grit, as I know, because oh I gosh. bought it and I highly well, recommend it. Can you imagine that one. people should go get both of those books and start listening Yeah, exactly that's what I was thinking. That's why I was like, we got to plug it right now. It does also say, though, that American Gods is only $4.23 right now Whoa. on Libro FM, whereas True Grit is twenty two ninety nine. Yeah. So here's what you should do. You should go and just buy, uh, use our code, buy True Grit, and then another book that you've yeah. been wanting, and then just buy American Gods, because $4 for a 20-hour audiobook That's is a pretty, pretty, pretty good freaking deal. good deal. Yeah. I don't know if that deal is going to last, though, so I don't know. Um, either way, use our code. <laughs> I yeah. think we might get audiobook credits for it or something. Yeah, I, I should know. really look into that because what if we have all these credits <gasps> we don't know about? That would be That'd useful. Be <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty cool. Um, all right. Well, I think that's all the reading news that I had on my end. Cool. Those are my updates. Heck yeah. Those were your updates? Yeah. And next we week we'll see continue. how well we're doing at Mashed Potato May. Very It's pretty exciting to see actually. how we do. I know it's fun because it's May 1st and I can actually start a book today because I'm, yes. I'm free. I'm fresh. Yeah. Every, the, the slate is clear. <laughs> the slate. That's perfectly timed slate clearing Thanks. stuff right there, Thanks. really. That's pretty cool. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much to everyone for hanging out with us and for listening or watching mm. this episode. It's been really exciting seeing the um, YouTube channel grow. Like, yeah. Obviously, for a really long time, we didn't have, for most of our history, we haven't had the YouTube channel. And um, it, it meant that we... It was harder to grow because there's no algorithm for podcasts. Yeah. And now that we have this YouTube channel, like if you subscribe and you watch it on YouTube, it pushes it out to other people. And we suddenly had like a little bit of a of a surge Ooh. in listeners and stuff. So awesome. thanks for hanging out with us. It's been, I don't know, but I love the pod. Damn it. I love it. <laughs> it's a good so, old time. Thanks for being here with us. We're going to go record our Patreon mini podcast, which is a weekly bonus that we do over there where we talk about the movies or shows that we've been watching. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go do that. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.